Hi everyone, Chucks here. If you just got your S22 series phones or even S21 series Samsung phones or the foldables Z Fold 3 and Z Flip 3, you might be wondering what are the key things I need to set up so that I can get the best experience out of the box, right? So this is the video where I'm going to take you through some of the things that I set up whenever I get my Samsung phone. And we'll also see how to make that so that Next time when you set up your phone, you can actually restore those settings in your Samsung phone. So the first thing that I do is change the display settings. So if I go to my settings and once everything is set up, I go to display and there are a few things I change here. First one is the dark mode settings. I turn on as scheduled and then choose sunset to sunrise. So I don't have to worry about when I turn on the dark mode, the phone will do it for me. The next thing I do is come down here and then adjust the screen zoom to my needs. If you're using the Ultra, it has really big screen, so you can actually have the least screen zoom so that it's not really zoomed in. Or if you're using S22, maybe you can just leave it as it is. If you're using the S22 Plus or the S22 Ultra, even S21 Plus and S21 Ultra, the other thing I do is go to the screen resolution and change it to WQHD plus so I can get the best screen resolution and higher refresh rate. Now this is available probably in most of the latest Samsung phones so not just the S21 or the S22 series. And then if you come down you will see edge panels. By default the edge panel will be available on the top right. I have modified it to be on my bottom left. This is where I prefer. So you can see that I have an easy access to the edge panel from here. And I can adjust that by going into the handle settings. And then if I tap on position, I can get to uh, have the handle in left or right. And then I can also choose the size, the width, and also a color. So really good options here because the edge panel does make it really easy to get access to some of the most used apps, right? And the next thing is navigation bar. I prefer the swipe gestures. So that's something that I do all the time whenever I get a Samsung phone. If you still prefer the buttons, you can leave it as is, but if you prefer the swipe, you can choose that. And that's something I do every time because I'm most used to swiping rather than you know, pressing the buttons and navigating between apps and the system. So next up is enabling the Dolby Atmos sound. So if you go into sounds and vibration in your settings and then scroll to the bottom for the sound quality and effects and you will get the option to enable Dolby Atmos. This is disabled by default when you set up your phone. So just turn it on and then you can set it up to be auto so it can infer whether you're watching a movie or music and then optimize the sound or if you prefer to always be on a specific mode you can do that here as well this just enhances the audio experience especially both for the speaker and any earbuds or headphones that you have attached to your samsung galaxy phone so after changing the sound settings i go to my home screen and there are a few things i do here to get more space basically for the home screen grid size i make sure that i use the maximum and the same with my apps screen grid size, I use the maximum so I can utilize the space I have in my screen. And I also make sure the folder grid, I use the maximum. But if you're using S22 plus, especially the ultra series, then this space is really great. You get a lot of space here that you can customize. And I also make sure Google discover is my media page. So when I swipe right to my home screen, I get Google feed. Yeah, rest of the settings, I just leave them there and then go back to my lock screen. There are a few things I do here. First, make sure that you set up screen lock type so that your phone is secure. And then I turn on the always on display. I love the always on display. And this is one of some of the things that you get using the Samsung phone, right? So why not use the feature? So I use it as scheduled. So here is my time, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then I choose a really good clock style uh, to my needs. So for example, there is the default clock styles you have here. Those are boring. 
But if you tap on the image clock and then tap on stickers, you get a lot of options. You get to select a GIF, you can select some stickers that you have downloaded, but the GIF is very interesting. Samsung has some really cool animations that you can pick like this bunny rabbit coming out of the hat, um, you know, this bread getting toasted, uh, the sloth. So really cool animations here that you can select the ghost of, of course, uh, one of my favorite. And then once you do this, now you'll have an always on display with those settings. So for example, here it is. Now you should see the always on display. Of course, in my camera, you're not able to see everything, but um, you see the ghost here and you also have your fingerprint sensor so that you don't have to fiddle around where exactly you need to keep your finger to unlock. You just know where exactly that is with that uh, always on display. So that is the always on display setting. And then I also enable dynamic lock screen wallpaper uh, in my lock screen settings. I love this. The pictures that you get with these uh, services are really great. I mean, the wallpapers. So here's my dynamic lock screen. And then I can select the categories that I want. So whenever you lock your screen, there will be a wallpaper uh, set automatically by your phone. So I've selected the category dogs, animals. If you love cats, you can also select the cats wallpaper. And now whenever I have locked my screen, so here it is, here is one wallpaper. And then now if I again open my screen, there is another wallpaper there. And again, if I lock and then look at my lock screen again, I got a new wallpaper. This is awesome, right? So every time I pick up my phone, get into my lock screen, I'm going to see those different wallpapers. Really refreshing. So once I finish setting up my lock screen, I go to the advanced features. In here, there are a few settings that I do uh, turn on or you know enable. So if I go into the labs, I make sure that I enable the multi window for all apps and full screen and split screen view. So to maximize the screen I have, um, you know, these two help to make sure that I get that multitasking done using my phone, especially if you have the ultra series, which where the screen is really huge. And then I go down to motions and gestures. There are two settings that are disabled which is lift to wake and then keep screen on while viewing. So I enable both. This is really useful. So let's say you're watching YouTube video or reading an article. The phone will stay on as long as it can detect your face. And then I enable the one handed mode. Sometimes with a big phone like S22 Ultra, you might want to have that one handed mode. I'm using with my one hand and then, you know, I want to go click on that arrow, you know, the back arrow. I really can't extend my thumb, but I can do the gesture for one hand and then I got access to that command really easy. And that is the one handed mode under uh, the advanced features. So you can either have the gesture or if you have enabled the navigation buttons, then you get to double tap the home button to get this gesture working with the buttons. And that's pretty much it. Um, of course, I check for software updates and make sure that I have installed the latest update. But those are some of the settings I do set up. Now, yes, it's a pain going through all these settings every time and trying to change, right? That's why you have to use Samsung Cloud. Samsung Cloud is great. This enables you to back up everything, all of the settings, all of the app settings and things like that with your Samsung account to the Samsung cloud. And then when you're setting up a new phone, you can just restore the data. It's really that simple. So when you look at the options that uh, for backup data, you see that you can back up your messages, call logs, contacts, calendar, and there is also settings. So all of the things that we saw, the settings will be backed up to Samsung Cloud. And the same with the home screen setup as well. So this is good. So once you have the Samsung Cloud, you don't have to do this again and again. You can just restore the data from the Samsung Cloud so that all those settings come back to you when you set up a new phone. There is one more thing that I wanted to share, an app. You know, I like the screen and I like to have a great wallpaper on my screen. For lock screen, we saw that we were able to get some really cool wallpapers using the dynamic lock screen service. But unfortunately, we don't have something for the home screen. So I usually, you know, go browse great wallpapers and pick my favorite. And the app that I use is this app called Backdrops. This is a great app. If you haven't used it, try it out in the Play Store. They're not sponsoring this video. So this is just my recommended option that I go and install every time. Uh, to ensure that I get the best wallpapers. They have some set of wallpapers the wallpaper creator has published. 
There's also a pro pack if you're a pro user. And there's also the wallpaper submitted from the community. If you want to, you can also upload your own wallpaper to the app. But they have some great set of wallpapers that you can use for your phone. So check them out and see if you like the app. And this is one of the most cleanest apps in the Play Store. So of course, if you pay, you don't get ads. If you don't pay, you get very little ads that are not intrusive. So I wanted to quickly go through the setup because I know many of you are buying the S22 series phones right now. So hopefully this helps you to get started with your Samsung phone and you know get the most out of it. Let me know in the comments if this helped you and what other settings do you enable when you set up your Samsung phone. Until next time, bye.